Life on board a spaceship is so busy. People just don't know. The mission control schedules your time. There's this, this line moving across your computer screen that shows what you're doing every five minutes for your entire six months on a spaceship. So it is a dictated and controlled environment up there. And nowhere does it ever say, go look out the window. But you just can't help yourself. Every time you get ahead of that line, if you give yourself an extra three or four minutes, you, you float through the station on the handrails, you pull yourself down into the cupola window, and, and you take another look at the world. And it is so many things all at once. It's beautiful. It's just raw, constantly changing beauty pouring by around you. It's instructional. You learn so much about the world. You see how everything actually fits together and the history of it and the, and the geology and the geography of it. But it's also a feeling of great privilege, of like awe, of like you've just walked into the most magnificent art gallery on earth or, or into the Sistine Chapel or into uh, a rainforest or somewhere where suddenly you're just overwhelmed with the place that you are. It's, it's an amazing stolen moment and I stole as many of those as I could. As astronauts, we train more than anybody knows. Uh, I had photographers train me. Hasselblad cameras with 70 millimeter film and Aeroflex cameras and uh, I became an IMAX cameraman and helped make two IMAX movies and Linhoff cameras and, and the whole gamut of complex photography with all of those photographers talking about not just portraiture and not just inside but how to take a good picture of the world and what parts of the world we haven't seen yet and you know some places have a lot of cloud cover and maybe one day you'll get a great picture of the Panama Canal or a part of the Amazon that's never been photographed because it's always so cloudy. And so you are hyper prepared to be one of the world's photographers up there. You're really trying to make sure that you're technically competent with the camera, but you're also artistically capable of understanding how to compose a picture, how to frame it properly, how to recognize something that's worth taking a picture of. And, and you don't always get it right. I mean, the National Geographic photographers, they take thousands of pictures for everyone that makes it into the magazine. Same for us. But the world is a very generous photography subject, and you have the best tripod in existence. So it's a great place to take pictures. I was lucky enough to fly in space three times. Flew the space shuttle twice. I was the pilot of the Russian Soyuz on my third flight. I helped build two space stations. I've done a couple spacewalks. And throughout all of those 166 days in space, 2,600 times around the world, every chance I could, I would try and get to the window and take a picture. Because who wouldn't? I mean, it's just uh, too beautiful and rare a sight to ignore. And so when you total all up after all of those space flights, including while I was outside on spacewalks, I think I took about 45,000 pictures. And a lot of them are terrible, you know just things going by or the, the glare of the atmosphere out of focus or you know you're just you're just trying to uh, make sure that somewhere in there the pictures are good and what do you do with 45,000 pictures you, you, no one's gonna sit down and look at them all so a couple years after I returned from my third space flight I went through all 45,000 and as I went through the 45,000 I would flag, oh yeah, that's a good picture, that's a good picture, that's good. So I ended up with sort of a nice smaller subset of worthwhile pictures that should be looked at. And then I, I thought if someone was floating next to me at the window of the spaceship, what would I want to show them? You know, if we were going around the world once, what, where would I want to go, hey, look at that, this, look, wait till you see this, wait till you see the, the great eye of the desert on the edge of the Sahara. Or, you know, wait till you see the skeleton coast or the, or the border between the United States and Mexico or all of the interesting parts of the world that are different than you expect to see. And I went through all those pictures, the best pictures that I'd taken, and chose 150, I thought, that really showed the story of the world. And those are my, my absolute best. Trying to distill this whole planet down to 150 pictures is, is crazy. It, it's an insult to the world. But uh, it was the best I could do to, to let people actually see what the world looks like. I called it uh, You Are Here, Around the World in 92 Minutes. But 
my whole thought at the time was if I had a good friend sitting next to me, what parts of the world should they see?